Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at NECA's new Predator movie, Fugitive Predator. I would say just The Predator, but you wouldn't necessarily know if you didn't know what I was talking about that it was the new movie's name. But that's what it is. This is the main, I guess, protagonist Predator. I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna see it, but I heard mixed reviews, so I'm not exactly that excited. Anyway, this is the new normal Predator, not the crazy monster one from the trailers, and it's called The Fugitive Predator. It's an ultimate action figure. And it's, it's pretty gorgeous. As you can see, it's just loaded with deets. It's got all the deets and some paint and some sculpt and stuff. So, lots to talk about. Let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just about eight and three quarter inches tall to the very top of his head, which is all the way back here. And that's going to make him just about, let's say, 22 centimeters, pretty close to that. So he's got some size to him for sure. He's not the biggest figure we've ever seen, but he's definitely relatively tall. And just for comparison, here's one of the AVP figures, just because I think a lot of people collect these, and that's a good standard to compare it to size-wise. I know the movie figures are generally a little bit smaller, like the Jungle Hunter and whatnot, and this guy's got some, got some size to him. He can go head-to-head -head with the AVP figures pretty well so that's good i like that i like it a whole bunch i do wish just on as a little bit of an aside i do wish the people in charge of designing predators would give give us one that's a little bulkier uh they're they're relatively spindly you know i mean they're still obviously cool and badass and everything but let's give one some boots or something so that he doesn't look like he's uh wearing like uh diving gear it's a little bit odd that they keep making them so skinny, but that's purely subjective, so you can just ignore that. Let's talk about the figure, since that's what you're here for. This guy's gorgeous. Uh, as usual, NECA doesn't disappoint with the sculpt or paint. It is fantastic. Let me zoom in all the way on the chest right there. Look at that. There's just, the armor detail is great. It's so good, and then the paint matches the sculpt wonderfully. A little bit of damage over here. It looks, it's just so good. The skin, multiple shades. This guy's got a lot of red on him, so it stands out a whole bunch. And then, of course, we have the spots throughout with the yellow, and it's just so, so well done. And that, that carries down throughout the rest of the lower body. There's not nothing specific that we need to mention there that's not already mentioned on the torso. But let's look at the head, because the head is obviously an important part. They do have the fully detailed mouth and eyes, the sculpt and paint. So very nice. The, the carapace, if you want to call it that, for the head. Very, very nicely detailed, and then of course we do have our dreads back here, which are still relatively basic, but still nicely detailed. This guy is definitely going to just look really, really great on a shelf, no matter what. You could just stand him there right like this and you'll be fine, or you could put him in a nice pose, and, and he'll look even cooler. So, uh, we do have some options for posing, thanks to the accessories we have. We have two interchangeable heads. We have the unhelmeted head, or unmasked head, which is just... Lovely. And then we do have the masked head, which is still very nicely detailed. Uh, for me personally, it's funny because when I started collecting Predators, I was like, I like the masks. They look cool. But then the unmasked heads just have so much detail. Either way, point being, either option you go with is going to look fantastic. They really nailed this mask. It looks great. And then we have an interesting thing. Uh, the blades just kind of peg into the forearm pieces. So you get two blades for each forearm, and they either just peg in, or you take them off, and that's fine. And, if you don't like that, you can actually swap out the entire forearms. So you do have just the two armored forearms, and then you have two forearms that have no armor at all. So I'm assuming that's relevant in the movie at some point, but figure-wise, you can do whatever you like aesthetically and then the cool thing about that is the hands are not tied to either forearm you can swap them out back and forth so you do have the two fist hands and then the two wide open hands so a pretty good batch of accessories not the most we've ever seen but i suspect a lot of the money for this guy went into the sculpt and paint because he is gorgeous we do get this uh but that i mean it's technically an accessory but you're gonna just want to leave it there so you can you can count that if you want to now, as far as the articulation goes, we have a ball peg for the head. It's, uh, well, it's technically a ball peg and a straight peg for the head to connect to, but the ball peg will do the same thing as the straight peg. So, practically speaking, just a single ball peg. Really good range, though. No problems at all. Shoulder pads are soft. In fact, this whole upper torso is soft. Uh, so, raising the arms, it's still a little bit of a problem. Not because of the shoulder pads, just because of the sculpt. And... I can't force it any farther. So you're not going to get quite horizontal with that, which is kind of a bummer. Rotating the arms works, but obviously the shoulder pads being there, it's going to get kind of ugly. So just be aware of that. 
you know, it's not the best ideal situation for articulation, but it does look good. Uh, bicep swivel? No, we don't get one up here this time, which is a little bit strange. You do get one down here at the elbow. It's actually going to rotate on either end of the elbow, and you have the two hinges. So I'll see if I can show you how that works. This guy's elbows are very stiff, so be aware of that. And sometimes these will pop out if you're bending the elbow, of course, but you can just peg them right back in. But so you do get the hinge there and the hinge there and the rotation. So it'll be fine. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm pretty sure they just did that for the interchangeable forearm feature, but I prefer the uh, bicep swivel being a traditional one. But it's still functional, so that's okay. And of course you can still rotate the forearm down here. And then the wrists have a swivel, as you would expect for interchangeable wrists, and a hinge this time, which is not something we see normally, so that's kind of cool. For the torso, we have a ball peg. Maybe a double, could be a single, not 100% sure, can't see inside, but uh, for the upper torso, so it moves around really well, and this can just tuck into his crotch piece, although all the artwork on the package, or the figure photos on the package have it outside like that, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to tuck it in, but you can do either one, and then this piece I'm almost positive you're supposed to tuck in, so they'll just flex as you pose him. So that's fine. So you have a ball peg at the top at least, and then another ball peg at the lower torso. So this guy's got really, really good posability. Very, very nice. Pretty much anything you want to do with this guy, you're going to be able to do. So that's great. Now for the hips, they're just your standard ball hinge. They do go pretty much all the way out to the side. Full on splits. So that's awesome. These guys are just floating pieces, so they'll move around. You don't have to worry about them. You do have a thigh swivel for the thighs. And then bringing the legs forward... Well, it doesn't work as well because his crotch comes down a little bit low. Even though it is a soft piece, it's a little bit restrictive. It's probably good enough. Not going to be doing any crouching poses with him, though. And unfortunately, the, uh, the legs are a little loose front to back, as is typical. Same exact problem we've seen on every other Predator figure that I've reviewed, as far as I can remember anyway. So, you guys are probably used to that by now. Double jointed knee works nicely. You get decent range out of it, and you can rotate at the top. Again, that's nothing new. And then a ball peg for the ankle. I do wish this was a little bit tighter, because he's tall, and his ankle's a little bit loose, so it's easy for him to want to lean over. So be a little bit careful with that. So yeah, it's a really, really solid figure. A couple little issues here and there, but ultimately, it's, uh, it's gorgeous. And I think most people are going to be willing to overlook a few issues, a few small issues, for it to be this gorgeous and that's that's where i stand but objectively it's still it's still definitely a recommendation so there you go guys thanks for watching make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you haven't it does help me out a whole bunch and if you haven't already you might want to subscribe because i do have new videos up just about every single day we talk about action figures movies tv shows video games all kinds of fun stuff so make sure you come back for that and in the meantime keep collecting